I've sunk an enemy destroyer. Hey team, this is Ripper here. Hope you guys are doing fantastic today. Hope you uh, enjoy the video, but it's an actual fun video to talk about and open discussion, you know, and that's the, what we're talking about on this channel. Most of the time is strategy, but also tactics and also just maybe the nature of the game and basic discussions of gameplay. And really, I think one of the biggest topics I noticed literally just playing recently and maybe watching a lot of other YouTubers out there that I've noticed a trend here where battleships are literally just sitting in the back. And I thought this game was really to play, to have fun and engage and shoot and press a button and you see an action happen and you get a result, right? But it seems more and more I feel like Wargaming has, I don't want to say nerfed um, the, the play style. And it's not about the ship, not nerfing the ship, but nerfing the play style. Because back in the day, I remember battleships and especially the lower tiers, I, I find that you do push in a lot more with battleships. But that's because there's not many, you know, they're brand new players and people don't know the mechanics of the game and the ships are a little bit easier and less threatening. Uh, as a, Like, for example, destroyers aren't as threatening, in my personal opinion, at the lower tiers. And once you get in the tier 9, 10, you start getting destroyers that can literally take on battleships themselves. So that, that's where I was trying to get at. And now with the invention of uh, CVs or aircraft carriers, and now with even addition to submarines, which I've talked about as saying that these ships are anti-ship weapon systems. And if you ha look at history, just look at what went from World War II to the Gulf War, you start seeing a trend in the, the more there are more weapon systems out there to design to kill ships, especially bigger, slower, less maneuverable ships like battleships. And you can even see in modern day history with the, the, the invention of anti-ship missiles, especially in the, in the United States side, I'm, I'm kind of uh, familiar in the weapon systems of, of America since I'm in the military. I've seen and studied how to do a lot of weapons and tactics. But, um, for example, the back in the day, the French created the Exocet missile. Now the invention of the Harpoon missile. And you have cruise missiles and slams. And now you have um, GPS-guided weapons. I mean, even, even bombs. I've seen, if you just Google YouTube videos on bombs being hit on, you know, just basic ships, one bomb can literally right through the hull of a ship, can just decimate and eliminate and uh, enjoy this little engagement here. Here's a Lucian. Um, Lucian outspots me, but I don't know why he fired right here. And this is, this is just, I, I love stopping the video to talk about destroyer gameplay because I'm a DD main. And right here, this engagement, I have to analyze, Do can I win this engagement? Notice his HP is not superintendent. So why would you run a ship without superintendent and take extra HP? Because you already have super heals. Why not take the HP? I'm not really sure. Maybe it's a brand new ship and they're working the commander up. But right now, I know I can pick this engagement. I've got 23,000 health. And we're going to aim right uh, in front of him, aim at the superstructure portion of his ship, because that's where the majority of shells will land. And I know he's going to pop his heal probably. But he, I get a nice juicy help right there. And here's where I pop the smoke, slam on the brakes, hit engine boost so I can get in that smoke quicker. And his heals just are not enough. And boom, he goes down. Splash one, first blood, first kill. Like I said, that destroy engagement right there determines the outset of the game right there. Now, because I had killed their destroyer player, they have nobody on the alpha tank, alpha flank to spot, torp, contest destroyers. And I've always said, if you kill the destroyer player right off the bat, you've literally increased your tr probability and chances of winning. So I'll just speed up the game just to you know keep the monotonous and boring part out of the way. But notice as the game progresses, you're going to see what what do the battleship players do? The battleship players have all the HP and literally the, all the guns and weapon systems. And look. Yamato, what can he do at this point other than turn away and kite? And really, and he's shooting at me, a destroyer player, rather than a bigger battleship, whatever. And you, look, you're just wasting your shots. Yay, went behind me. Look, it, it doesn't do anything. I mean, you fire, again, I, I don't notice this. Maybe it's because I'm a YouTuber and people see my ship and they're like, oh, let's shoot a ripper. But you're sacrificing the game as a battleship player. Look, you got a Rhode Island and a Venezia in the back who are less of a threat to maybe you at the time, at the moment, but you're shooting at the destroyer who is just gonna go dark or dodge your shells and you just wasted your shot as opposed to a Rhode Island big hunky battleship right there on the right there look I'll even spin to the back um spin to the back why is that not working okay sitting right there you could shoot them you could shoot the Venezia your shells definitely overpower a lot of these two ships right here but you're shooting and wasting your shot on me so I, I don't understand that logic what, whatever you can continue shooting me that's my job that's me as a destroyer player. I'm doing a good thing I wasted your shot on me and here's the other aspect you have, let's see here, you have a, um, a, a carrier. And the carrier is going to go out and spot everybody. And especially, I know they're doing the carrier rework right now, but this is the current state of carriers. They spot everybody. They drop fighters. They perma-spot with fighters. 
uh, and that's pretty much it. But my my uh, destroyer can eliminate a lot of those cruiser. I mean, sorry, uh, carrier planes because they're tier eight, whatever. But right now we're just going to shoot the encounter and just take a look at what the battleships are doing. We have a, our Yamato going to the back. You have a Yuma Harry. I know how to say that. You got the Bismarck going left here. I don't know what's going on. I non-existent players over here. I have nobody visible over here with the amount of ships are there. And there goes another splash too. Eliminated literally the, the one side of the team. Now, again, this is exactly why I think battleships are starting to go obsolete and just being out for overwhelmed. You have HE spamming ships like the Rhode Island right there who can burn the crap out of you down with this incredible shots. Venezia already, we talked, you already know. Venezia in the back here already know has sap shells, which is the invention of that weapon system is produ produces a lot of firepower and angling is kind of almost minimalized. And you got me as a fire breathing Kitakaze destroyer ship. So, literally burn you down now here's a good example of this shot right here notice this battleship is doing what you're supposed to do you're supposed to push in but because of what we're about to do to this guy right here there's sap shells right there just took off literally about 15k off his ship and now we're gonna get he spamming on the Yom yamhari i can't pronounce that yamhari and then we got the Rhode Island also firing, spamming HE as well. So what is this battleship player going to do? Now, I, 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 floor, I love battleships. I mean, I think I, that was what in, encouraged me to play the game, of seeing brawling battleships firing back and forth. But look what's going on right now. What is the player, supposed, especially new players, who don't know how to really do anything and position the ship? They're just kind of getting the feel for the game. Yay, he shot all my shells, and this dispersion literally was nothing. And look at what just happened in right there. All his, his shells, or I'm sorry, all his HP just being melted right down and look i'm just spreading hate and boom he's gone and, and i don't i don't know what else to do right there for you i mean i can't think of what strategy to tell the battleship player hey you're supposed to engage and play the game but look the rest of your team and the other battleships didn't support you they ran away and then you just put yourself you put your teammates in that in uh, that problem where you're, you're just not supporting your your player base and, and again look look where all the battleships are at i mean all you're going to rely on light cruisers like this colbert just to try to win the game for you I mean, just look at this. He, he can't do anything, and he's literally just going to run away, kite away, get shot at, and look, I'm just going to HE spam him to death. Let's enjoy it for a little bit. I like blowing up Colbert's and Smolenskas, the, the cancer of the game. And again, this is another reason why battleships are dying. I mean, look at this. Colbert is going to literally melt you down if he survives. And here we go, Wisconsin. What, what, what can he do? Wisconsin literally is just going to push in and, and try to do what? His Half his health is gone, and... It's very difficult, so I, I don't right. know. So Here's another example of, you know, we're just playing Kitakaze this morning and just trying out different things. But, again, here's another example of battleships. So what are you supposed to do? I mean, especially with the invention of the carrier. Okay, look at the carrier, what he's doing. He's out there spotting destroyers. Okay, great. And now the rework's supposed to address this where just perma-spotting and going around spotting the entire map, it really takes away the fun of surprise tactical gameplay because if you already know where the ships are at, now you already know where they're going, there's no fun in positioning anymore. It really, the fun part of World of Warships back in the day was you literally could get find a way, what can I do to be sneaky? What Can I sneak all the way to the eastern flank or the western flank or maybe hide behind this island or maybe get in a position in front of this island? Whatever that may be, it took away the, the mystery of the aspect of what is the enemy going to do? Because this is World War II time frame where GPS satellites aren't available where you can just spot the entire world and know where everybody's at. That's why war is unfair today. That's the whole point. Technology is supposed to make war unfair so that one opposing side wins the match. This is more, if you're going to play, do games. Games are designed to be equal, if you want to call it that. Some, 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 some way of giving every player the equal advantage to play the game. Because now it makes it fair for everybody of all types, shapes, sizes, ages, whatever. So it's engaging and fun, right? It makes it a fair, balanced thing. Otherwise, nobody would play the game. If, it, if you're going to join a match where it's unfair right off the bat, it's no fun anymore, right? Nobody plays the game. You're trying to inc increase your player based wargaming you're not there to destroy it because i've seen so many comments read so many reddits so many uh, posts even comments on these videos where man this sucks and yeah and like i said okay here's a prime example right now so you have a carrier that could bomb the battleship you have a submarine also that could go out out spot the main right now and torpedo the crap out of him he has no way to spot the guy unless relying on a teammate here's the problem of relying on your teammate your teammate not be there he may not be doing what he's supposed to do, especially if you're going to rely on a destroyer player to try to spot a, a submarine. That doesn't make sense because uh, the Cabros, for example, right in front of me, is out-detected by submarine by kilometers. 
Let's not argue that. Look, I'll hit the tab button right here. If you want to look, the Balau is 5.9. He outspots the Kabarovs by literally three, no, two kilometers. Sorry, public bath. But the Kabarovs, I believe, is a legendary build. So if you're out to 9.6, whatever, you're outspotting the guy by four. So you're not going to rely on your destroyer player. The next thing is, what if the destroyer player is dead? Now, what is the main supposed to do? You know, so there, there, there's that aspect. Now, a carrier problem. Let's talk about the CV problem. The CV problem is just like I've watched Flamu and Potato Quality, and they brought up very good arguments. The carrier player is literally an airport platform that is not risking the ship at all. It's in the back. He might as well not be even in the game. The ship, literally, there's the Nakamob being spotted right here. You see him? He's in the back. He might as well be off in the corner of the map and just become a uh, an airport takeoff pro platform, right? Which is a problem because you are not risking your ship. The whole point of this is to risk your ship and take hits. Look at this main here. Taking torpedoes, and boom, he's gone. Main, super ship right there. I feel bad for that player who had to spend the credits, and now he's not going to get any money anyways because those credits had cost money to start. I digress. Let's go back to the player, the carrier bane. The problem with the carrier is now you're, the player is using the ordnance. It's just like me firing my shells. My shells go out, they hit the target, they blow up, they cause damage, right? There's no way to defend against the shell. I mean, it, once it goes, it leaves my ship. I have no control over it. All the other player can do is dodge. That's it, right? That's that's really it. They can't press a button or whatever to make the shell disappear, go away, whatever. But the carrier player is literally launching its ordnance away from the ship, which, mind you, reloads, by the way, repairs. And then the next thing is the carrier is going to send it out and fly around the map, spot everybody, get adva tactical advantage. And now you can maneuver... Any position you want around that ship, just like a UFO could, like I've, I've talked about this, I've seen videos where UFOs are literally going around aircrafts, so going spiraling around and it's an unfair advantage. You, you see what I'm saying? You might as well call these UFOs uh, on these ships because the ship can't do crap against uh, the carrier and you can't risk anything. You don't have to risk anything. You can throw your planes or whatever at them. Now, the other thing is the carrier can attack from any direction, any angle, and, you, and I've heard players say just dodge. Do you know how slow, I'll slow the speed down. This is how the ships operate inside of World of Warships. Look, look, look how slow these ships maneuver. You're saying you want me to just dodge an airplane with a ship in water. Do you know how long it takes for a ship to turn and speed and maneuver? And look at airplanes. Look, they're flying at, at, like at 100 knots right there. You, you look at that. Look at 100 to 150 knots. They are going amazingly fast. You might as well call them UFOs. They're just, it will circle your ship many, many times, drop wardens all, all day long, and there's nothing you can do about it because they've nerfed AA. They made AA trash. Some made ships don't even have much AA, like one machine gun, you see? So that's, you're defenseless at this point. Again, the reason why airplanes were created was to be a counter to ships in the, world, in the Navy, in the World War II. They said, look, we're going to win. The Japanese it was like, well, let's focus on the airplane. Let's do Pearl Harbor. And they, they, they proved it. Like attacking everybody with air ships, all the, the ships docked at harbor trying to maneuver whatever AA. Where they, they all had AA. Where was the AA? Where was the, the uh, AAA and everything? They just weren't ready. They weren't. Now modern day uh, AA systems are much, much better right now, right? But again, they, they just don't suit the map. And here's the invention of the submarines. Now, I actually want to show this off because I'm going to die to this submarine. Okay, so I damage con, right? Now he gets unlimited pings. He can ping me all day. Well, the purpose of Damage Con was to mitigate the counter, the, to be counter to the th submarine threat. But look, he can keep pinging. He can't even spot me around. He's just going to blind ping me, and now one minute of radar. Now, okay, you didn't realize this, but guess, look at what happens. Look at these torpedoes. Da -da 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 -da. Look at this. Ooh, homing missiles underwater. Oh, my gosh, they're going to turn. And because I Damage Con, I thought Damage Conning was supposed to mitigate and counter the submarine threat and just dodge, right? Well, I took one right there in the stern. And you think uh, I was going to out-dodge it? Whoa, wait a second. Holy cow, they come back around. Man, those, those Sidewinder missiles can really pack a wall up. And that's exactly why... Um, what's a battleship player or destroyer player going to do in that situation? I'll mind you, that was my mistake on the the, um, the destroyer play. Let's talk about the battleships. All right, so here is another good example of battleship players running to the back and just not wanting to play the game. Again, I, I feel like they're running in the back because the, the ship is becoming obsolete because they, if they push forward, they're going to get either submarine torped, they're going to get spotted from carriers, and they get just focused, fired down. And that's again, that's why they're doing the carrier rework. And then, of course, you got the, all these HE spamming uh, kind of things that are just going to burn you down. So, again, what is the battleship player going to do? They're going to run to the back. And again, just let's watch the the battle player. Uh, I'm sorry, battleship players in the back, um, just on the mini map there. And it just depends on what team you're on. And I've seen a lot of teams uh, on my, the opposing side that I played against. Where they're just like, you know, what are you guys, what are you battleships doing? What are you running away for? Are you going to play the effing game or are you going to just literally, I quit? And, they, and literally people just rage quit because 
players one again i think one of the biggest reasons in randoms is because these are newer players and you're if you don't want to get newer players you know war game you're going to make you're going to need the game one interesting engaging and make it easy enough for the people the people to understand the game with the carry work you're making it way too complicated number two is the battleship players is supposed to be literally maneuver your ship pointy clicky and kill the ship and your secondaries uh, should work i think you should give secondaries all battleships because why not you're gonna if you don't give secondaries or anything you're not going to increase any kind of engagement you're going to encourage to sit in the back and then just snipe and shoot from long range, which was an artillery game. But again, it gets really mundane when you start pushing them further and further and further back. Okay, I get it. If you guys don't like secondaries, you think it's a flawed system because if you push and you die anyways. Okay, great, whatever. Secondaries are were supposed to be fun. They brought them back from like a few years ago. If you didn't realize, um, if you've been playing this game long enough, they did nerf secondaries for a while. And then they finally brought them back with such uh, angerment from the uh, player base, they said, bring secondaries back. They were fun when they were just primary focused secondaries and you had instantaneous de dispersion where the dispersion was great on secondaries and it encouraged people to brawl. You know, back in the day, people literally were up in front of everybody's chili and, and just shooting and having fun and engaging. But look, look at where the battleships are right now. The battleship players are literally just kind of, watch, they'll reverse in a minute here. And, and, and again, why? Why won't they push forward? Because they're afraid of just too many shifts that are going to burn them down. And I don't know what the, the solution to this is. Maybe make them a little bit more armor, give them more HP or something, and make it where because what you're doing wargaming is essentially by bringing in more engaging, fun, you know, cool, gimmicky ships, you're killing the, the battleship player player base because these sh these ships are becoming more and more anti-battleship, anti-more deadly because they're putting so much firepower out there there's only so much a battleship player can tank and do outside of literally one of the tactics is run away. That's the first simple tactic you can do is run away. Well, now you're making it where the damage con doesn't work well. The heals are not enough and your, your armor is not sus uh, sustaining enough, especially when you have ships like Conde, Smolensk, Colbert, destroyers like me, players that are just going to sit there from smoke and melt you the crap. You have submarines that have homing missiles underwater. And, and you can't outspot them. Your depth charges reload too slow where the torpedoes reload fast. You have a carrier that can literally bomb you from the sky from will and your AA is trash because guess what? Oh yeah, here's another bad thing about carriers. The only counter system you have is AA on your ship, which is damage. Once it's damage is gone, it does not come back. You see what I'm saying? Once it's gone, it doesn't come back. Now, if I blow up an airplane, that comes back. A carrier gets the unlimited reload on airplanes. Because why? I figure Wargaming thinks that, well, if you lose all your airplanes, the carrier's renderless. Yes, just like if they had died in the game. They're renderless. They, they are useless. That's the whole point of the game. If I kill all your weapon systems, you should be done. Just as if I killed you in the game. But no, they want the carrier to survive the entirety of the match, even if all their planes are dead, but they regenerate. You see what I'm saying? Now, if they made all the planes die, then the, the carrier's dead. Just like if I killed a destroyer player, they're gone. They're, they're removed from the game. They don't come back to life all of a sudden, right? That, what, that That's the solution. I think that if you want the players to be engaging in fun like Call of Duty, then make the, the, the system where you get to come back to life one more time or something, or at least two or three times, whatever, and just play the game as an objective-based game. If not, if you're just, again, this game is still where you just player versus player, where you just kill the ship, you die, you win. That's it. If that's the case, then you're going to have to make the player base not run away the whole time in camp. Just like in Call of Duty, if you just literally camp in the back of the map the whole time, it's not engaging, it's not fun, people are just going to quit and ban, whatever. But what is this? Again, here's the destroyer player. All right, I'll, I'll kill this destroyer for you guys. Let's kill this guy first. And boom, he's gone. Okay, now that the, the, the destroyer on their, play, their team is dead, what is this battleship supposed to do? He's got no spotting. He's got no gameplay. He really can't do much. Look, his, gu his guns are reloading really long, which is what battleships are supposed to do. And he's only got eight guns, so he's going to fire eight shells. every. There it is. He fired his shells, and probably nothing's going to happen. Bupkis. Yep, nothing. Now he's got torpedoes. He's got HE spamming. Oh, he has 42,000. Oh, he's getting airstriked as well. So not only does he have to deal with CVs, he's got to deal with airstrike uh, abilities like Guten Loud, Tromp, whatever. you got me spamming him. And, you know, he's probably damaged. He's trying to use his health. And what else? Oh, he's getting airstriked again. I mean, literally, what is this guy supposed to do? I mean, this is, and, and look, you're just going to have guys running in the back of the map. Look, look where these battleship players are at. This battleship's running in the back of Bravo, hiding behind Massachusetts, can only do so much. Uh, look at my battleships. I was going in reverse, Vladivox going in reverse. Uh, not really understanding that gameplay. And, and again, I, I feel like the battleship player is becoming slowly and slowly really being nerfed to the ground to the point where it's unmanageable anymore. And this is where you're seeing a lot of these ships just sitting in the back and there's nothing you do. I'll pick another. This is getting kind of boring at this point. 
And again, I, I get, I'm not here just to rant on it, but I'm seeing a problem. And I see a lot of these games where a lot of players and the battleships are, one, I think just inexperienced, or two, if they are experienced, it's just the only nature of the gameplay is to run to the back, aim at the back. And again, I'm not trying to say battleships are all bad, and there are some battleship players that are, of course, on my teams, I seems on my teams that are always pushing forward, and they're always trying to shoot and snipe people and get... But again, it's sniping from the back. And that is how, how fun is that gameplay? Over time, it gets kind of mundane. Uh, and I think that slowly Wargaming is going to kill your player base because at the advent of technology, and I, I get it, Wargaming is trying to make the, sh the more ships and trying to make it more engaging, more uh, noticeable, more fun, uh, more uh, enticing, more attractive. And I understand that. The business model says we have to introduce more ships that are fun and engaging rather than just the same old, same old, pointy clicky, simple point of gun, shoot and fire. And that's the nature of the gameplay. But because of the fact that they're doing that, it's a business model, they're inherently, I think, slowly destroying the game because of the introduction of technology and the introduction of the idea of let's make it more fun or more exciting and thrilling. Uh, by doing that, you inadvertently are just going to uh, destroy your player base. You're going to destroy the people that, that you want to keep around that are put money in the game. And uh, that you want to encourage new players. And again, I think Flamma did a recent video where he just showing, hey, there are a lot of players are dwindling and the, the numbers are going down rather than going up. And I, I don't want to see that. I think this is the one of the only few games. I enjoy World of Warships. It's still enticing and engaging for me because why? I'm a destroyer player. I'm the one melting all the battleships down. But I want I want more players to be in the game rather than kill uh, you know kill the, the the mood or you know kick them away and and because of that I want it to be more engaging more a bigger community and let it grow rather than decreasing and dwindling because you need to increase more attractiveness and more player base. Look at that! My battleship just detonated a a, a tromp right there with one shot salvo. That's great. But at least he pushed up with me a little bit, right? Rather than look at the battleships right here. You got a battleship player at Bravo going to the back here. Montana, I'm not really sure. Again, he's being just hunted by a Minigumo and the submarine. Okay, good for my team, bad for his player experience right there. GK is going to push right through here, and look at that. Everybody is retreat. The three battleships are in the game with a carrier, by the way, and a submarine. Two anti-ship weapon systems right there that are literally going to cause our battleships to literally, they're, they're, sorry, the enemy team battleships to go in the back. Even some of my friendly team is going in the back. My Monarch is reversing, going to the back here. Uh, GK over here is at least somewhat mid. Well, okay, whatever. But again, what, what is the point of this video? I want to increase the discussion so we talk about it more, so that we're changing the pace and changing the mood. Maybe even Wargaming, more, more, let's face it, Wargaming won't listen. They're just going to keep pumping out ships and doing whatever they can. But again, I'm telling you guys right now that my personal opinion, I think that it's slowly going to kill the player base for and because of the play style. Not because of the ships are getting nerfed or whatever. Actually, the opposite on the contrary. The ships are getting so powerful to the point where you just can't, happily engage or become effective so that you can play the game look at that look at look where the battleships are right now yeah i'm a battleship player my whole point of the game is to literally sit in the back and run away how fun is that it's not fun anymore because it's you're gonna get melted destroyed detonated torpedoed torpedoed by submarines you're gonna airstrike by uh you know now destroyer players destroyers have airstrikes now you have other carrier based things hybrid ships and you have the carrier itself that's literally just gonna focus you down and mop you up Again, I hope the carrier rework will do something better. Again, I've already said remove carriers and put them in their own mode. Make them something like a convoy system or airstrike system. Whatever you want to do, make it a mode where you just do airstrikes and have fun playing World of Warplanes. Okay? Make a mode for World of War Warplanes. If that's what you want, let carriers do that. Battle the Midway, whatever you want to call it. Go watch the movie Midway. Midway literally is just all focused on the airplanes bombing the crap out of ships. Okay? If you want to see the, how that weapon system is working out fine, then go for it. You notice they didn't focus on the AA or anything on the ships. They didn't show destroyers maneuvering and get out of the way. No, they just focus on blowing up carriers and blowing up airplanes on the ground. That's the nature of the airstrikes, okay? Uh, here's another good idea. Like, here's a destroyer player pushing forward, and he gets blapped by my carrier base, my battleships. See, because the battleships are up, boom, they eliminate the, my the enemy for me. Way to go right there, battleship players that actually push up and move forward. So that's the nature of the game. But again, look at their battleship. How is their Montana going to be effective? Because he's being hunted by one, a carrier. He's being hunted by a destroyer, and he's got a submarine. How is this fun and game? Look, battleship hiding behind an island. How is this fun and engaging right here? You see, you're going to kill your battleship player base, which majority of players, I do believe, like playing battleships because they're big, they're beautiful, they're they're engaging, they're, they shoot guns, they have secondaries, they do all these wonderful things, but GK is known for secondaries, but it's not pushing up. Why? Because it can't do anything. It can't do anything. I mean, what are you supposed to do against a carry again? You, you blow up your AA on the GK, he's gone. You see? 
and the, he loses the AA abilities, but the carrier can go home, regroup, re repair its planes, and bring them back to life. That's another big problem. The other thing is the, the destroyer player can hunt you down, torpedo to death, great. How is that fun and engaging? I get it. I, I'm a destroyer player. I understand the frustration, okay? But, again, you're going to slowly nerf your play out to the ground. And this is what, look, Montana goes down to torpedoes. They, yay. How, how much fun was that for the battleship player? Okay, now you got the G carrier. What's he supposed to do? He's got a submarine, an airplane, a, a, a destroyer, and literally is just going to sit there and just mop up the guy. Let's just follow the GK around and see how he's going to do go against that. He gets torpedoed and bombed. Uh, let's see here. Where is he going to go? Let's see. Yep, he's just going to get that, and there's nothing. He's, he's going to get torpedoed again. I mean, literally, there's nothing he can do. He's trying to push up. He's trying to be effective and engaging. But, again, that is just the way the nature of the beast is and the nature of the game. Carrier is uh, getting hunted by the, yep, finally, a carrier gets hunted by the destroyer, but he, that's what the destroyer has to do in order to get a carrier? Wow. And he goes down as well. I mean, that if that's the nature of the game, this is going to be very, very detrimental as to the player style, the player base. And, and again, you're introducing more and more ships that are, again, you got rate of fire like the Sherman. You got rate of fire like Austin, but pump out sap shells like it's a machine gun. And that's there's nothing that the battleship the battleship didn't even get an increase in our DPM, didn't get an increase in armor, it didn't get didn't get an increase of speed or maneuverability. Uh, and you're just nerfing that ship to the ground. The, the, the battleship's play style is gonna just be nerfed to the ground because it can't outmaneuver fast firing guns, it can't outmaneuver submarine homing torpedoes and submarines, it can't outmaneuver the, the carrier and, and the, the airplane. Again, I've, again, what is the, the premise of the video is I think because of the introduction of new weapon systems that are slowly, because World War II, if you're going to keep the game in World War II genre, then you're going to face this problem eventually because the advent, the invention and the introduction of new and new and newer and better and more effective weapon systems it literally eliminates the whole game. And I, at least in Call of Duty, if you upgrade a gun or something, the guy can still run around and move or jump and, and move or go from room to room and do things like that. You didn't nerf the player. You just, you just gave better guns. But again, the gun, it, it doesn't uh, destroy the player who can run. It doesn't make them slower or inability to jump or go hide. Game, With this game, the, the ship can only do so much. It can't jump. It can't run. It can only sail in, a, in the water at a certain speed at a certain angle. And it only has so much armor and so much health. So... I think Wargaming really needs to uh, really rethink this before you kill the game because eventually it will make the system obsolete because there's only so much you can do unless you're just going to make this all a destroyer submarine carrier game, which I think, and even maybe a cruiser uh, gameplay style because I think cruisers at least can, at least can do something a little bit. Uh, I think you're slowly going to nerf that player base. Let me know your thoughts. What do you think? Do you think um, that the... The battleship play style is becoming very mundane, very uh, run to the back of the map. We're always in reverse or always kiting away to the back and just becoming a sniper fest. Is that what you guys think this game is slowly becoming or am I wrong? I mean, again, I'm just bringing up ideas, food for thought. So we bring up a great discussion to have a good, healthy discussion because that's what makes this country so great. You can talk. You can have a great, a nice discussion around a beer over a beer. Uh, in the pilot world, we always had these, uh, you know, uh, Friday pushes where you would, uh, you know, have a beer, talk about how your flight went today, what did we learn in the MOA, and the tactics we did and learned today, and that's kind of things what we did. So that, that's my thought. What are your thoughts? Uh, do you think that the game is slowly becoming uh, nerfing or the play style of battleships or does the battleship kind of style die, or is it actually being reborn? I don't know. Uh, I thought the with the invention, the advent, the um, addition of the Wisconsin, which is a great, great ship, by the way. I think that ship was really awesome, very good play style. It, 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 I thought it would bring the battleship play style back, but again, I've seen Wisconsin's running in the back of the map anyway. So, again, what do you think? I mean, look at this GK right here. Nothing you can do, getting spammed from both sides. But this is pretty much at the end of the map. He's the last two players, but whatever. I digress. Hope you guys are doing well. If you see me out there, say hi. Like, subscribe, bell, and below. Appreciate all the support. Great discussions. I love the discussions we're having, and we're having a blast doing it. As always, you guys stay safe, and uh, until next time, we'll see you guys soon. Take care. Cheers.